Today I've got two things that are really exciting. Number one, when I put on this my pants this morning, I found a dollar in my pocket. Here, let me get it for you. Hang on just a second. Nobody cares. What? Nobody Yes. Okay, fine. Well, let me show you the other thing I'm really excited about. The other thing I'm really excited about is I finally understand the relationship between harmonics and overtones. They have been very confusing for me, and I wonder if they're confusing you too. Here we go. The neat thing about a harmonic, in fact, the beautiful thing about a harmonic is that the frequency of the nth harmonic is n times the frequency of the first harmonic. That's beautiful. And for a situation where you've got yourself a fixed-ended rope, for instance, like this, this guy has a uh, first harmonic, that's n equals 1, and then a second harmonic, harmonic that's n equals 2 that looks like this, and it's very obvious that this has half the wavelength and therefore twice the frequency assuming a, a given speed of the uh, rope moving, the wave moving on that rope. But for overtones, it's sort of the same thing. This is n equals 2. Over here, for overtones, I like to think of overtones as the next possible wave that can exist. So in this case, the harmonic and the overtone is the same darn thing. So let's say uh, I'm also considering a standing wave in this tube here. So I could give you a standing wave that's like this. That would be the simplest one that could possibly exist. And then it's n equals 1, and we would call this the fundamental. We're not going to call it an overtone, but it's called the fundamental because that is the simplest thing that can exist. And the first overtone, I'll call this the first overtone, but I won't call it n equals 1 because I'm still going to use the numbering of the harmonic system. So let me start by drawing you a tube, and I'm going to draw the first overtone. It looks like the first overtone is going to have two nodes in the middle, so I'll put one there and one there, and I'll go like this, like that, and then I'll do a dotted for the other one to make this a little bit easier to see. Now that's an entire wave, and again, just like that, it's an entire wave. We just have different boundary conditions. We're fixed at these ends and open at these ends right here. So I want you to begin to identify for at least the double fixed or double open situation that the first harmonic is the fundamental and the second harmonic is the first overtone, etc. This pattern just continues and we could do uh, like that and that's n equals 3 and we'll probably do the similar thing over here assuming that everything is kept the same. We're going to do boom, 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 we're going down and up and down like that, and then dot, 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 That guy right there is the second, the second overtone. That's very easy. Where it becomes horrendously confusing is if we get into a half-open tube. So, there we go. We're going to preserve, whoa. We're going to preserve our a statement that the first that the frequency of every harmonic has to be an integer number, an integer multiple of the fundamental or the first harmonic. So, in a half open tube, we've got a nasty situation where the first harmonic looks like this. We've got a node there and an antinode right there. And the consequence is that in that tube of length L, We've only got ourselves one quarter of a wave, but the next one, which I could call the first overtone, this guy here is the fundamental, and this guy here is the first overtone. It's gonna have a uh, dot maybe right here, and we'll go up and then back down and like that. And that's the same length L right there. But L in this case is not housing one quarter of a wave, it's housing three quarters of a wave. So we've added half of an additional wave on here and every additional overtone that we investigate is gonna add another half of a wave. The big problem here is we can't use the same nomenclature. Like uh, the problem is this guy is the first harmonic but this is not the second harmonic because you'll see it's actually one third as long of a wave. See, let's see if I solve this for lambda. This is lambda one equals four times L. But this is not lambda two. I'm gonna have to leave that subscript out, but lambda two seems to be 
4L over 3. Oh, shoot. It's one third as long, which means its frequency, remember I know that the wave speed, which is assumed to be the speed of sound and air for these cases right here, is frequency times wavelength. So if I'm looking for frequency, it's going to be the speed of propagation divided by the wavelength. So I'm dividing by that right there. I've got myself three times higher frequency right there. So this is not the second harmonic, it's the third dang harmonic. Ew, gosh, it's three times higher frequency. Dang, there are some instruments that are closed at one end like that. That's a little bit tricky. I suppose you could put a stop in an organ pipe and have it do that. So tell me about it. Is it flutes? Is it, uh, what's that other thing? Clarinets? You make the call. But I want to take you now to an example of using this, and I don't want to do it quite yet. So watch the next video. Yeah.